Hey guys, David and Holly here with Glory Hills Homestead. So today it's bright and sunny here in Oklahoma. It's the first day we've had sun in like three weeks ish. It's amazing. So, but first, if it's your first time to see our channel and these videos, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, but today what we're going to talk about is calving season. Calving season. <laughs> so yes. here on the homestead in the springtime, things really, that's our busy season. And even before spring right now is our busy season because we're prepping for the busy season. So um, this is Honey. She's our bred heifer right now. First time heifer. And she's a dairy cow. She's Jersey. And so we're going to go through our calving kit essentials, what we like to have on hand. Um, getting ready for our baby coming. And we're gonna walk through what we have in our kit, what we like to use and how and when we need to use that stuff. Um, yeah, anything else? However, we do have a whole bunch of stuff in this kit you don't necessarily need. That's true. Um, however, we have jerseys or milking cows. Uh, so when, when you have a calf uh, with a milking cow, it's a little more hands-on or it can be a little bit more hands-on than if it was with a Jersey or a, I'm you mean sorry, Angus. <laughs> with an Angus or a Hereford cow. Yeah. They're a little bit more hands-off. Um, they kind of know how to drop their calves a little bit better. So typically Jerseys can have a few more things to look out for, which is why our calving kit is a little bit on the extreme side. If you watch this and it's your first time, don't get overwhelmed because you don't have to have all this. It's just what we like to have. So we're gonna go through it and uh, let us know if you have any questions. First, I gotta tell you, I have the most beautiful life in the world. <laughs> okay, no. So the bare minimum that you need to calve is you need a good shelter. You need them to be out of the rain and the wind. It's very important that they stay warm and dry. So that also goes into the bedding. You wanna have straw um, you can use hay, but straw is better because of the insulation factor, right? Um, again, you want them to stay warm after they come out. For that first 24 to 48 hours is very, very crucial in a calving process, especially in dairy cows. Um, another thing you want to have is a good water, water source. They need to have clean water and foliage. So they need to have either alfalfa hay, uh, sorghum hay or just a good quality hay yeah. very important and then we like to offer supplemental protein so sometimes we do protein cubes or oats um, or cubed alfalfa things like that um, and then also a high quality mineral is really important a loose mineral and a salt lick are things that we always like to have so this isn't our we're not the pros at doing calving <laughs> we're not this is our second year <laughs> this is our second year so this would be our second calf that we've ever calved but here's here's some things that uh, we found are helpful yeah. to us especially when it came to the first time we calves oh you know so this is a insulated blanket so again you want to make sure that you keep your calf very warm when it first comes out it's super important because you don't want to get um, pneumonia or anything of that nature so a calf blanket should not be used all the time. Let me put that out there. It's good to have in case you have a crazy blizzard and things are like negative five degrees and the wind chill is insane. Nine times out of 10, a calf blanket will do more harm than good. But if you have bad enough weather, that's when this comes into play and that's when it will be helpful and beneficial. But most of the time you will not need a calf blanket. So next, obviously paper towels. Lots of yucky things go on with calving, um, from cleaning cow parts to cleaning cow babies. So. so let me tell you something about paper towels. You want to make sure you guys get better quality paper towels. If you guys get the cheapest of the cheapest, it doesn't help you. It just becomes a mess. Um, so paper towels are important. So calf bottle, very important because if for some reason the calf won't drink from mom, you need to have a way to get colostrum in its body. So there's that. God forbid you'll never need this, but it's so much easier to have before you need it than after. Um, this is a tube feeder. Also, if you have these, go ahead and sterilize them before your calving dates are approaching so they're nice and clean. We still have to clean ours. You can just put them in a big pot on your stove and boil them for like 10 minutes with a roaring, roaring boil. Um, there's videos on how to tube feed a calf. We're not gonna show you how to do that. There's plenty out there. This is really great to have though, because it can and has saved lives on our farm. Uh, Resorb is really good for electrolytes. It's an oral solution. You can give it to the baby. 
Uh, we have Bolus, which is anti-diarrheal. Um, it's basically like a pill for a cow. And then, let's see. These are really big tablets, and this is a Bolus gun. It's so if they're being finicky or wanting to spit it out, you put the tablet in there, and you can just shove it and insert it down their throat. So those are helpful in case things are having diarrhea and not scouring. wanting to withhold, yeah, scouring and not wanting to withhold fluids. Um, so for the calving bottles, extra nipples are good. And this is also a calf nipple, but with a smaller um, extension on it. So this technically could be used for a goat or a cow, but it's specifically for the cow bottles with a smaller nipple, just in case you have a really tiny calf that needs some help or a preemie. These are great to have also. So you have every size of nipple and a few extras. Dawn soap. What is Dawn soap for, babe? It's for lubrication. Sure is. So uh, if you need to go in and get a calf, uh, we had to do this on our last one. Um, the calf wasn't coming out and the water had been broken for how many hours? Just over two hours. Okay. Um, so I ended up getting the next thing, a large glove, putting it on my hand all the way and then you put the soap on. Again, it's to sterilize, but also to lubricate before you go in and grab the hooves. Yeah, the first step for that was feeling the placement of the calf. Um, so even if you don't need to pull, but you need to go in and feel the placement, that's really helpful. Um, just helps you get in there easier. You're going to need two different kinds of gloves. These, you can get them on Amazon. We can link some. Um, the pink ones are the really long ones that come up to your shoulder. And then you want to put those on first, and then just your hand gloves on top of these, because it'll help these from sliding off. Um, so you'll put the long glove on and then just a smaller tight hand glove on top of that. The smaller gloves will help kind of make it where it's easier to feel around and touch. Yeah, you'll know what you're feeling a little better. So let's talk about milk fever. Dairy cows especially are very prone to milk fever and most specifically Jersey dairy cows, which is what we have. So CMPK gel is very handy. We used this last time. We're always going to use this. If you have a very good feeling that your mama is about to calve, we like to go ahead and give this before and after. It's just an extra calcium boost, calcium, magnesium, stuff like that. Um, but it's to help prevent milk fever. And so we like to give it a little bit before and quite a bit after. I think we do a whole tube after. Mm -hmm. We might, did we do a whole tube before too? I think we did a half a half tube, a tube before. Um, on our first feeding and a half a tube on the second feeding. feeding, um, And that way she got some. Yeah. And then we did a whole tube after. Yeah. So we gave some before and after and she did not get milk fever. So that's great. Definitely get this, especially if you have dairy cows or Jersey cows. We have a few tubes of this. So you're going to want to have three or four on hand, depending on the size of your cow. So something that's very important to have if you have any livestock in general, you want to own this. It's just iodine spray. You're going to want a few bottles of this because when the um, calf comes, obviously let it get settled for a few minutes, but then you want to dip the umbilical cord in this right away. Um, I don't like to dip it straight into the bottle because then it contaminates the whole bottle. So put some of this into like a little plastic cup, dip the umbilical cord, and that will just help prevent any infection going into the umbilical. That's good. I've never seen anyone have this in their calving kits, so this is where I'm a little bit extra, but I've used it and it works. Just a baby snot sucker to help clear airways. Yeah. <laughs> I've used it on many of our animals and it helps a ton. Um, so this is just obviously to help get fluids out of airways. I think it works great and I like to have it. Um, another must have for us is molasses. We buy a whole bunch of these jars leading up to calving and kidding. And the reason is immediately after a mom has her calf, you're gonna wanna put um, about a cup to a cup and a half in about three gallons of water and give it to them immediately after. It's just gonna rehydrate them, give them lots of good minerals. Um, it's basically just a really good super power drink of like electrolytes to give them a boost right after working really hard. The moms appreciate it and it definitely helps them bounce back a little faster. So another thing that I highly recommend is to get some good flashlights, <laughs> right? Because you're gonna be going out there and checking on them all the time. Yeah. Um, so we have a headlamp, we've got several other good flashlights. Very important to use. Um, you're gonna be checking on them at nighttime. But also, you don't wanna be checking on them and then the baby's coming in the middle of the night and you don't have any light. Yeah. Because that would suck. So again, headlamps, 
Very important. Yeah. So also, um, if you have cows that are farther from convenience, make sure you pack extra batteries in a Ziploc bag with your calving kit. Anywhere that our cows have a baby, we're fairly close to our house. So I'm not worried. I can run back in the house and get batteries really fast, but always headlamps and flashlights because most of the time this is all going to go down in the middle of the night on a really cold day. <laughs> Early in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know, so something that we didn't have last time uh, that I probably really wish I had is pulling change. Pulling chains. So pulling chains are very important when it comes to cattle uh, because sometimes they get stuck in that birth canal, right? They might be in the right direction, but they're just not coming out. They have to have a little bit more assistance. You usually see this in the first time calvers. Um, so again, pulling chains, we added that to oh, our calving kit. Hey, Isaac. We added this to our calving kit this time um, just to make sure we have it just in case. Last year we didn't have them and we did indeed have to pull the calf. She was in the right position but again first time mom she just needed some extra help and we did have to go in and assist in getting the calf out. So we're gonna have that which is great. This is again something that is a little bit extra but I like to have a stethoscope. This is the one I use for our family and our animals um, but I like to if there's any um, suspicion of pneumonia or silent pneumonia things like that i like to be able to listen to lungs and hear for fluid also check heartbeats um i'm basically the vet here so i like to have this because it can save us a trip to the vet so something else that is super important is a thermometer um, i like a digital thermometer nothing fancy this is just one from a hospital this was when we had one of our babies and it's <laughs> yeah. lasted this long <laughs> Um, but I also recommend the little plastic covers. You can get them at Walmart. It's like a dollar thirty for a pack of like fifty or something. But it just slips on plastic covers. So if you're having to take multiple animals' temperatures, um, you can just put the cover on, and you don't have to clean this in between uses, which saves time. And again, if there's anything critical, that just helps get answers faster. And it lowers the the risk of infection, yeah, spreading sure. infection from one cow to another. Definitely. So the temperature you would want a healthy calf at is 101.5 to like 102.5, 103. Um, but 101.5 is a good goal. So definitely have that. So this is new to this year's calving kit. It is a drench gun, which is super helpful for any large or small ruminants. Um, as you know, the inside of their cheeks can be very sharp and have little razor blades, but you also don't want to get your fingers bit down and smashed on, So, especially with cows. So if uh, you have to administer any kind of oral medication or oral booster of some kind, this just slips right into their cheek. It has a measuring vial on the side and you can just plunder it right into their mouth. Um, you want to go towards their cheek, never towards the back of their throat. And this will be very handy because I've wanted one of these many times. So I know we'll be using that. Another thing we like to have is a rope. There's many great uses for this, um, but in case you have a calf come out and it's not really like wanting to breathe or get up and you just have a floppy calf, there's something called a Madigan squeeze, I think is how you say it. We've never had to perform this, but it's where you do a certain tie around the rib cage of a calf and you hold this like pulsing position for a certain amount of time and it supposedly gets them going again um never had to use that i'm gonna read up on it more before honey calves but this is in case we have to do that so one of the things that we also have in our kit is probios right is that how you say it <laughs> i've always just said probios yeah pro i say probios <laughs> so probios is to help probiotics in their gut yeah so good deal. it's a good thing to have yeah. um so this is propylene glycol i think is how you say it We've had this since last year and we haven't had to use it, um, but we keep it on hand. It is for if your mama cow gets ketosis, um, which you can also just use human ketosis test strips to see if they do have it or not. Um, you'll get some warning signs from how they're acting. But if you get a ketosis test strips, then you'll be able to know for sure. Ours are in the house. I need to add those into this kit, but test strips to know for sure. And then if they do propylene glycol, is a good fix for that. So there's that. A few things that um, I have on paper that I wanted to tell you guys that we're gonna just leave in our like medicine cabinet for animals because I don't want to move everything around. I know where it's all at. Um, is like you want some good antibiotics um, on hand, some good needles and some good plungers to administer medication if you have to. We like to have penicillin on hand always. LA 200 is a good one to have on hand too. Um, 18 gauge needles are great if 
Um, you just need something that will work well for most things. And then for cows, you're gonna wanna get a few different sizes of plungers, but definitely get the ones that go up to 20 milliliters because typically they do require a lot depending on how much they weigh. Um, also try to find out your cow's weight roughly beforehand. That way you don't have to like in a pinch in a pinch. That way you don't have to find out um, what your cow weighs in a pinch. If time is of the essence, you already have this information on hand. Let's see what Or if else. your cow is down. Yes. Um, if your cow is down, it's kind of hard to gauge weight at that point. Yeah. And if your cow is down, then they're probably suffering from milk fever and you need to get a vet out immediately to administer an IV. We would like to add an IV to our calving kit. I'm not sure if we will this time or not, but that's also great to have on hand, especially if you know you're going to be doing it for several, several years to come. Um, cow colostrum is one that you're going to want to have on hand. Um, a replacer, but better yet, if you could find a dairy or someone who has had dairy cows that has frozen colostrum that you could keep in your freezer, just in case, God forbid, something happens to the mom, you still have to feed that calf and make sure colostrum gets in it. So at minimum, try to get the colostrum replacer on hand, have that before anything calves. Um, make sure you get one that is an actual animal protein base and not a plant-based protein because that will not work on a calf. Ask us how we know. <laughs> um, so let's see what else. You want to make sure, especially if your mama cow has horns, that you have a halter already on her ready to go, a head halter, and then a lead rope ready, um, just in case you have to tie her to a post and go feel for a calf or um, just manipulate the situation in any way. You want to make sure you stay safe and the cow stays safe. So definitely pre-get a head harness on and have a lead rope ready to go. We also like to have a calf halter but we typically don't put that on until they're like three weeks old or so. Yeah, until they're almost a month. Yeah, they're really tiny for it before that. Hey guys, we ran in the house real quick because we thought of a few things that we're excited to have this year that we didn't have last year. So I'll go first. If you're a mom or dad and you have kids, walkie talkies, because we like to leave one in the house for our kids. We take one out in the pasture and we're able to communicate. Um, I can tell them what's going on. They can tell me if they need help with anything and it's just a lifesaver. Also, you know, cows, whenever it comes to calving season, um, their hormones are going crazy. So although they don't generally charge you, yeah. sometimes they can. That's true. You know, so it's always good to have a good communication that you could quickly get in contact with somebody else. Another thing that we're super excited about yeah. is this is a leapfrog baby monitor. So, um, which we'll have a link in all this stuff below, but um, so one of the cool things about this is you don't have to go out every two hours and check her. Which we did last time. Yeah, we did consistently for yeah. seven days. Yeah. You know? so, it was like two weeks. Yeah, it was. It Through was the night, we time. went out every two hours. But with this, we'll be able to look at her outside. Um, and the cool thing is it will reach. So it'll reach from inside to all the way to the outside. And you don't need Wi-Fi on this particular device, which I love because we only have like a Wi-Fi box and it's kind of spotty, or my Fi box. Wow. Kind of spotty this you won't need any internet connection it does it on its own it's not waterproof but if you have any kind of shelter you know that's out of the rain then it should work so we're super excited about that and we recommend those two things as well oh you know guys so one thing that we wanted to add is this um no amount of medication or preventative measures or anything will have any power over the power of prayer so one thing we do for our animals is we pray over each of our animals um, before they go in this calving season um, because we have found that it's it's more powerful than anything you can buy right yeah. there are some things that again you got to have um, but prayer is a big one especially if you have a sick mom or a sick calf and things have already happened prayer has saved our animals way more than any of these intervention tools ever have so just want to encourage you god is the ultimate um, caretaker and will do better than any of this stuff ever will anything else no ma'am so if you guys enjoyed this don't forget to like and subscribe let us know if we forgot anything that you would add um, if you have any questions on how to use any of this stuff and i think that's it yeah and stay tuned for the upcoming videos because yeah. our little calf will be born here soon that so. udder is growing fast is. every day <laughs> that's so. for sure so we love you guys we'll see you guys in the next one remember god loves you we'll see you guys later bye